Hey guys, NES Addict here. On this episode of Retro Rewind, we're going to travel back to September and October of 1989. We're going to witness what happens firsthand when you run over a Nintendo with a car. Learn what gives you the power of long distance and come face to face with Captain and the Game Master. So, please be kind and Retro Rewind. While this issue of Nintendo Power was being read by Nintendo fans everywhere, New Kids on the Block's hit single, Hanging Tough, was getting its fair share of airplay, and the season premieres of what would be classic shows aired in the form of Doogie Howser MD and Baywatch. In the news, my home state of South Carolina was making headlines after being hit by the devastating Hurricane Hugo. So let's get started. Here on the cover, we have an animated Scrooge McDuck in front of a claymation diorama in the form of a time machine, with foreshadowing of potential enemies in the form of a bee, a monkey, and a Venus flytrap. But look at all that gold in the background. We are sure to be swimming in that after this epic adventure. So here on page six, we have the mailbox section. Listen to this letter titled, Fun and Durable. The NES is by far the best product I have ever purchased for my children. While being entertaining, I've discovered that it is one of the most durable products being made today. Believe it or not, I drove over my children's NES with our 1984 Cadillac. Needless to say, we were all very upset. After removing the screws and the top of the machine and straightening out the metal frame that protects the circuit board, I was able to slip a game back in. Much to our amazement, after carefully plugging it in, it worked as perfectly as ever, and still is after two weeks. Thank you for producing such a durable system. All of us appreciate it. How in the world does anyone run over a Nintendo? Hey Todd, am I good to come on back? You're good. Come this way. Whoa, 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 whoa! What's going on? Dude, you almost ran over my Nintendo. Also in the mailbox section, there's a cool picture of a Mario birthday cake. Some guy named Mark Discordia, who looks just like Mario. And a bunch of kids with some red Nintendo nicknames, like Mike Air Ness, Shannon Nintendo Warrior, and Danny Nintendo Macho Man. And on page 8, we get to the game on the cover, DuckTales. It explains here on page 9 that there are actually three endings, which gives this game some replay value for sure. Then it gives a walkthrough for the levels the Amazon, Transylvania, and the African mines, and points out how to attain all the objects and hidden treasures. Can someone tell me why houses in Transylvania always have food hidden in random places? Page 16 through 19 shows you all of the end bosses for each of the five levels, with hints on how to beat most of them. On page 20 starts a seven page look at Dragon Warrior. It gives you a look at some of the game's enemies you'll encounter in this game. There's a green slime, a red slime, a drakey, a ghost, a scorpion, a magician, a skeleton, a warlock, and a magic cart. No wait, magic drakey, my bad. And here on page 28 is a really cool ad for the NES satellite. Look, it's four times the fun, as this would allow you to play four player games like off-road, NES play action football, Kings of the Beach, Nightmare on Elm Street, Magic Johnson's Fast Break, and US Championship Volleyball. And it works with not only the normal NES controller, but the NES Advantage and the NES Max too. That's what you call the power of freedom. Or is it the freedom of power? It also works as a wireless remote, so you also have the power of long distance. Uh, hello Japan? Would you guys like to play some Nintendo, or I mean Famicom? Yes, sir. Ugh, sorry, wrong number. And here on page 32 they review hoops, where basketball players aren't born. They're made right here on the streets of the city. Look at these odd drawings. Where are the rest of this guy's glasses? On page 34 through 37 we have the Counselor's Corners. Let's see who's helping us out in this issue. Todd J. Bergman, rocking a well-manicured mullet. Then we have Dave Murray, who appears to moonlight as a used car salesman. Then we have Kim Racy, who looks like she was probably the office hottie with those suspenders. 
And finally, we have Rob Baker, whose hobby, other than playing games, was paper mache sculpting. There's a safe bet for you, Kim. And man, was this full of good tips. How to get through section 17 in area four of TMNT, as well as defeating the giant mouser in Technodrome. There's also a tip to find the hammer in the adventure of Link, and the infamous kneeling at Deborah Cliff with the red crystal to get to Bodley Mansion in Simon's Quest. All right, and finally, one of my favorite parts of the magazine, the poster. Check it out, it's Batman. One of my all-time favorite NES games. It doesn't get better than this. Oh wait, it actually does because there's also a Super Mario Bros. 2 insert. And this insert helps guide you through World 5, 6, and 7. And it also shows you how to defeat Wart. On page 51, we get an in-depth look at what later would be one of Nintendo's best-selling products, the Game Boy. What really surprises me about this is when I saw my cousin Tabitha's, I was just not that impressed. Despite the fact that it was a way to take games on the go, as it was pocket-sized. And on page 56, there's a bonus Howard and Nestor comic showing Nestor playing Tetris on his Game Boy until his mom ultimately ends up stealing it. Is this implying that Game Boys should be used for parents too? Awesome. On page 59 starts the section simply known as previews. The previews in this issue were for some really great games. Willow, Batman, River City Ransom, and NES Play Action Football. This is pretty interesting. Here on page 67 are some screenshots from Batman that never made it into the game. Makes you wonder why they took it out. It looks awesome. Where is Vicky, do you know? Where is she? Vicky's in Gotham City. Gotham City. Also, I never saw this one up in the game. Check out how well this game dealt in the power meter. A four for graphics and sound, a four for play control, a four for challenge, and a four and a quarter for theme and fun. I like it. On page 71 is where the classified information is stored. The most interesting is for the adventure of Link titled Monster Maneuver. It says, Link must save as much energy as he possibly can on the road to the Great Palace. We discovered that he can bypass at least one enemy encounter while traveling on this road with a little luck and good timing. After passing the River Devil, Link will be on a path where wandering monsters cannot hurt him. On this path, there are three parts where Link will face rock-throwing enemies. If Link enters the first section at the same time that a wandering monster intersects with his path, he will go to a safe section of the path instead of meeting with the rock throwers. And how did anybody figure that out? On page 77 is the official Howard and Nestor comic. In the comic, Nestor plays a Mega Man like Hero who must defeat Dr. Wily's newest creation, H-O-W-A-R-D, Howard. In the comic, several tricks are revealed, and one on how to reach a seemingly impossible ladder in the first section of the Dr. Wily stage. Just when you think Nestor finally wins in this comic, you find out it's just a bad dream for Howard. And on page 82, they have the top 30. In first place, we have Zelda II The Adventure of Link. In second, we have Super Mario Bros. 2. In third, we have Ninja Gaiden. In fourth, The Legend of Zelda. In fifth, Blaster Master. In sixth, Castlevania II Simon's Quest. In seventh, Legacy of the Wizard. In eighth, Bionic Commando. In ninth, Guardian Legend. And in tenth, Metroid. On page 85 starts the Pack Watch, where they show some hot news, like the future release of Shadowgate, Codename Viper, Tombs and Treasures, Godzilla, and The Boy and His Blob. <laughs> All right, on page 90 we have NES Achievers. So, once again, it's time to look for weird names. What about Trin Tran from Merkel, Texas? Finished Cobra Command, or Isaiah Pissner, who beat Kid Nicky, or maybe Danny Molliam, who beat Stinger, and what about Ellen 
Scramstad, who beat Ultima. And how about Michelle Magyar, who beat Xenophobe? Why would anybody play Xenophobe? And on page 92 of the NES Journal section, we witnessed the birth of yet another Nintendo-themed cartoon, Captain N the Game Master, featuring Captain N and his dog, Duke, Princess Lana, Mega Man, and Mother Brain. So I have to say, recently I watched a few episodes of Captain N the Game Master, and man, in this one episode, there was some suggestive dialogue. Just listen to this exchange between the Eggplant Wizard and King Hippo. It's no use. I'll never fit into this pipe. Uh, nonsense. All you need is a little lubrication. Lettuce is green, tomatoes are red. Turn King Hippo into a salad head. Hey, this ain't lubrication. Into the pipe without any toil. Abracadabra, vinegar and oil. Ooh, I'll toss your salad. Vegetable! Oh, where did I get my hand? As an adult, it's unbelievable that they snuck this kind of stuff into children's cartoons. What the heck, Nintendo? And here on page 93, we have another C-list celebrity, Brian Robbins, from Head of the Class. And he talks about how he and his personal trainer play Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. I'm not sure really how they compete though, because it's not two-player. Here on page 94, it shows the 10th annual International Othello Tournament in Warsaw, Portland, who will begin to use an NES hooked up to a large monitor to duplicate the player's moves, so people can keep up with the player's interaction via the NES. That's an interesting way to use it. There's also an article on keeping your game clean with the NES cleaning kit, and finally, on page 95, they wrap up the issue with a rehash of CES with winner Abby Fisher, who got to spend four days in Chicago, where she tried on a power book, tested games like Fester's Quest, and had lunch with none other than Howard Phillips. Well, that wraps up another episode of Retro Rewind. I hope you enjoyed. Come back next time when we'll review the November and December issue of 1989 with Tetris on the cover. Thanks for watching.